Welcome to the Reality Check. Today, January 30th, 2018. What do we have on tap today for today's show? Well, of course, we're going to have a review of Feisty Cherry Diet Coke. Let's crack this puppy open. Doesn't taste feisty or cherry, to be honest. I don't know. Just tastes kind of like a cherry Coke Zero. Nothing feisty about it. Not, not bad, but not great. I don't know. There's your uh, unpassionate review. Now, the reality of this all is very simply. Of course, we know tonight was uh, State of the Union. Of course, that's the big thing we have on tap here. State of the Union. <coughs> Trump's for help. Well, one year in office, big state of the union here, you know, this is when you're actually talking after you've had time to do something, not where before when you're talking, you know, before, you know, pretty much talking about what your plans are when you first get in office. Now I can do with all state of the unions. This isn't just a Trump thing. This wasn't just a, a Barack Obama thing, but I can do away with. All of the standing up and clapping every minute to say something just drives me crazy. If you say, America good, and they're standing up and clapping, you have to have a, a they're sta they clap for that. If you say, criminals, criminals bad, here they are, they're standing up. They're standing up and clapping for that, like it's some bolder genius thing you've said so i mean a little bit less of that you know every once in a while stand up and clap for the people the stories about them you know you see um a lot of people who were heroes you know got the crush you know, um, You know, stuff like that. That's definitely, you know, the uplifting stories. Those are the things we want to see people clap about, cheer about. We think those are great. You know, like I said, the rest of the standing up and clapping. Yeah. But we got to get to the real moral of the story tonight. You notice the rats, the Democrats, not standing up. And this isn't even a Democrat Republican thing. Here's one that Steve Scalise. You now, the fellow House member who was shot, shot on a ball field, got back to work after three and a half months. This guy was nearly killed, and the Democrats can't even stand up and applaud this guy when Trump just acknowledges the fact that they're so happy that this guy came back after being shot to not only survive, but to actually come back and start working again. The guy could have took the easy road, retired, whatever. I mean, who knows? I don't know if I would have went to work if I got shot like that. I mean, and yet, these people can't get up and clap for him. And you have Pelosi. It looks like pulls some people. Pelosi. But, you know, that's what we get with Pelosi. When Trump talked about rising wages, no Democrats, they didn't look happy. They didn't stand up for that. What's wrong? We don't like rising wages. I mean, you would think they'd at least applaud that. Even, even though they're trying to say Obama set up this economy, well, then applaud for it. Applaud for the rising wages. Nope. Black unemployment, lowest ever recorded. And the Black Caucus couldn't care less. Not only did they not stand up, not only did they not applaud, they looked absolutely disgusted. I mean, you could have been saying, you could have said Black unemployment is at an all-time high and Blacks are poorer than ever. And there literally would have been no change in emotion. And, and I'm sure they would have been more attentive, but I'm saying the way they were, there was really no change in emotion from that. 
they just look like just disgusting. Oh, black unemployment's the lowest ever recorded. And we're the black caucus. We don't really like that. I like when uh, Trump talked about welfare to work. We want to get you from welfare to work. That's one of the things that not only puts less strain on the government, we're paying less in benefits, and we're getting somebody to have some pride in themselves, we get them to work, and they actually become a taxpayer instead of a tax taker. So that's very important. Um, I like that. I love hearing about that. That was very important to me. Um, I definitely believe that any program we should have should get as many people into the workforce, and I'd rather see us help people with child care even if we had government-run daycares, I'd rather see us help them with that so they can go out in the workforce, get a job, maybe get promoted, and then get out of that program to where they're dependent on themselves, then just keep on giving people the check, a check, a check, a check, welfare, food stamps, whatever. I'd rather see us give them a chance to get a skill to get promoted in a job if they're so willing. You know, you can't help somebody more than they're willing to help themselves. It's a very important lesson in life, and it comes from dealing with your own family to dealing with strangers. When you're trying to help somebody, if they're not going to put as much effort as you do into helping them, it's just not going to work very well. Uh, the uh, When Trump started talking about illegal aliens, you heard some of the groans back there. Those were pretty funny. Um, Close the loopholes, no more MS-13 allowed in America. And he told a few stories about um, there were uh, two families that um, had their children killed because of MS-13 who came in here illegally. So that was a touching moment. Um, so it's to protect our citizens, right? America, Americans are dreamers too. Good line. Um, but that's it. That's To me, that's one of the big key for me in any government system if you are not protecting the people then there's really no point in the government i mean you could be as famous and rich as you want but what difference is that going to make if you're not protected if you're not stable in life if you're not able to be secure if anybody could just come up to you and i know it could happen as a freak you know or something that's rare obviously things like that can happen but just in general to keep you as secure as you can to give you a chance to survive and enjoy your fruits of your labor otherwise we're back in the old wild west and nobody's going to live very long and nobody's really going to enjoy anything because you know it's just almost like being in a gang once you think you get to the top there's somebody gunning for you they're going to take you out because they want to be in the top and then that's short lived because you know the next person wants to take you out so protecting our citizens, number one function of the government, not giving out free stuff. Yes, we can help people who need it, but the number one thing is to protect everybody. That's for adults, children, women, the less fortunate, handicapped, you know, absolutely. And then you saw um, the one clip of uh, the ice cream man. Now, everybody should know who the ice cream man is by now, Marco Rubio, the ice cream man. He, um, didn't want any compromises on the border. He just wants it open, I'm sure, because he's negotiated plans like that before. When Trump said he had a set plan and everybody's going to make compromises and not get what they want, there was Rubio slumped in his chair, the ice cream man, wasn't selling his ice cream bars. He was just sitting in his chair all slumped down. He wasn't happy. Marco Rubio, the true ice cream man that he is, you know, Way to ruin your career, Rubio. At one time, you could have actually been president, but you chose to uh, be an open borders guy, and that doesn't protect anybody. It's very dangerous and unintelligent. So Trump's plan on immigration, he said it was like a four-pillar plan. Um, and right away, Trump started talking about one pillar, and unfortunately, uh, didn't make me happy. The first thing that has to be talked about the first pillar in any plan is secure that border. And sorry to tell anybody, but I wouldn't even negotiate on that point. I'm like, we're securing the border. That's what we're going to do. And then we can talk about who we're going to make legal and how we're going to deal with this. But to me, it's all irrelevant without a secure border. And secure, secure border is not something we negotiate. Why do you negotiate? I don't, it makes no sense. Your security 
that's what the government's there for. We just got done talking about that. They need to secure the border, keep us safe. Then we can deal with who and who isn't going to be here. And, you know, because of the masses of not securing the border, now we have people here illegally. What we're going to do about that, how we're going to make them productive, and how we're going to weed out the people that don't want to be productive and get them the hell out of here. Get rid of all the illegals in jails. Get rid of all the, you know, people that aren't here to live the American dream and help others with the American dream. So for any plan, secure the border is always the first pillar. And I wouldn't negotiate on that. I mean, it's just like that example of there are some things you negotiate on. You know, if some dude's coming to your house to go out with your daughter and he has the nerve to tell you he's hooking up with her and doing this and that, and you're like, uh, no, get out of my house. <laughs> and he's like, well, how about this? How about I just feel her up a little and kiss her tonight? Are you negotiating? Oh, that's a good compromise, dude. No. You're telling him to get the blank out of your house before you kick him in the head and beat him down. There's no negotiations. There's no negotiations on the secure border. There's none. That gets taken care of before you even talk about anything else. Otherwise, everyone gets round up, everybody gets thrown out. I'm sorry. But there's no sense. What What is it we're going to do if the border's not secure? If we're not monitoring it, then people are just going to come in and we're going to end up with these same problems. And these are problems. Whatever way you look at it, I mean, anybody knows having kids in here by themselves, having people that are unaccounted for, it's not a good thing. It's not a way to successfully run a country. It's not good for these kids to be stuck in the Middle East. They are citizens, they're not citizens, they have rights, they don't have rights. It's not good for them. And it's not good for your neighborhood. It's not good for anybody. So, yeah, like I said, first pillar, first thing any before even a plan is discussed, we secure the border, then we can talk about it, negotiate what, who's, whatever. Um, and then when you see, you know, Trump clapping, like sometimes he was talking and we'd clap and everybody else would clap. I like that. I'm sure some people would be like, oh, he was trying to encourage people to clap or whatnot. I'm sure you'll hear that junk. You know, when I speak sometimes and, you know, I'm at a place and I'm telling a story about something, I will clap. It's to show respect for the person you're talking about. Like everybody else is clapping. You know, they're showing their respect. They're applauding somebody, you know, you should be doing the same as a speaker. I don't see anything wrong with that. You're not there to tell a stone face story and you couldn't care less. No, you're like, yes, I am showing respect to you. Thank you for what you did. Thank you for what you accomplished. And that's why I'm sharing the story with my audience. I think that's really good and classy. I'm sure though there'll be many a fools. I'm sure a good old Mika and Joe tomorrow will, you know, be going crazy about that. Um, there was one part when, uh, well, there were a few times, but they were chanting USA, USA. And one of these dimwits got up and actually walked out during that. It offended them so much. I wonder which dimwit that was. I'm sure we can look it up tonight and figure out which dimwit it is. So that kind of wraps up the speech. Nothing surprising. Um, a lot of it's the same old thing. You know, he said he's willing to work with people and... I mean, it's just about our safety, security, America first. It's pretty much it. He actually should have said that a few times. Um, but nothing shocking, nothing surprising here. Nothing outlandish, just nothing mean-spirited. You know, it's pretty honest, and it is what it is. Some people will agree, some people won't. Now, the rebuttal. There's five or six rebuttals. I mean, I wish I had time to listen to... Um, so, you know, Dirty Waters, Maxine Dirty Waters and her rebuttal, I'm sure that's great. Impeach 45, impeach 45, yada, yada, yada. I got illegal bank loans for my, I mean, uh, I'm Maxine Waters, I'm above the, I oh know, I'm Maxine Waters, I'm such a good person, yeah, whatever. So, regardless of that fool, the major rebuttal I had was Joe Kennedy. Now, before we start talking about Joe Kennedy, um, I don't understand how it's a rebuttal. Trump finishes speech and less than 10 minutes later, you're having a rebuttal. Did you review anything he said? Do you know what he said? Are you actually speaking to what he said? Or is this something that's pre-written? You know, the way it wasn't the same thing. I know they did the same thing when Obama gave his. There was, you know, some Republican dude there ready to talk out. 
it's not a rebuttal. It's just another, you want to have your few minutes of fame last. I don't know. A rebuttal is like when you're listening to the whole thing and you're going to challenge points and actually give some new looks on something, some new takes. I mean, that's, it's just not a rebuttal. It's just another speech as far as I'm concerned. Now, Joe Kennedy, right? Um, to be honest, just like the Bushes, just like the Clintons, the Kennedys, we've just had enough of them. They're not the great family they once were. When you had JFK, a real leader, who knew how to deal with people, he knew how to treat America, he knew about respect. You know, whether you agreed with everything, or at least some of them, you can get behind the majority of what he wanted to do. But then it just went downhill from there as each Kennedy came. And, you, you know, Ted Kennedy, of course. Murderer. Lying scum. I mean, just the trash. Is it one of the trashiest people in the last 50 years, Ted Kennedy. A legacy of trash. Ted Kennedy, one of the lowest common denominators. I mean, you want to talk about a junkie? A junkie is better than Ted Kennedy. A junkie, for the most part, just hurts themselves. And then we, Ted Kennedy murdered somebody. Murdered. And showed no remorse just disrespectful scum let me just get off of that so you know how i feel about that you know i mean joe kennedy i don't know nothing that exciting he said you know normal stuff it was pretty quick low key you know no problem whichever but the one thing that struck me in his speech was he said, God bless, and God bless America. Now, that's quite interesting. He did realize he was doing a rebuttal for Democrats, right? If you don't remember, the Democrats voted God out, right? In the last presidential, right before the election, when they have the conferences, the Democrat National Conference. They voted God out. So it's very interesting that, uh, was Joe Kennedy going rogue talking about God? Or did they vote him back in? Is now God in their hearts? Is God, is God in their hearts? It's a good question we have to ask. I don't know. And that kind of wraps up, uh, my discussion. And I'm sure I'll have more points from here or there about that. One other thing, um, I guess topics you could say that are related to the State of the Union speech. There are a bunch of people boycotting. It's like, firstly, everyone knows I had no interest in Barack Obama, so, but anybody would boycott it. It was just, it's just dumb. Firstly, it's your job. If you're a House member, if you are supposed to be there, it's your job, like Supreme Court justices, it's your job, unless you're sick or for some whatever, but if you, it's your job. And then there were six uh, Black Caucus Democrats who boycotted the State of the Union speech. Now, what's funny about these clowns is this was the same group that they just showed the photo of a meeting that had shaking Farrakhan fans. Farrakhan, <clears throat> one of the supreme racists of our times. And here it is, the Black Caucus group meeting with this racist. And they're boycotting, boycotting Trump. Why? Really, why is it that they're boycotting Trump? Because he's not a hero like their friend, Farrakhan? I don't know what it is. Hmm, very interesting. But it's funny. You meet with Farrakhan, who's, you know, like he's a real work of art. 
And what else can we say on that? Not much, you know, not much as the day goes on. And Farrakhan, what a unbelievable. Some of these people don't, uh, you know. So, okay, already found out through quick research who left during the USA chant. Now, if I had to place bets and they gave me a board, this guy would be um, definitely one of the guys, like, looking at a list of people that definitely I knew would, would leave when they started chanting USA. Not shocking at all. And you've, you could guess who it is. It is none other than Luis Gutierrez, the illegal alien loving congressman from Illinois. I'm sure that when once he heard the USA, USA, this guy was gone. He was unhappy. He left. I'm sure I'll make some excuse. Oh, it was something else. He was crying. There was something in his eye. You know, whatever the excuse is. Luis Gutierrez, sorry, we're not buying it. You still have some explaining to do, man, right? Because why? Because you all of a sudden quit your job, even though you're fighting for everybody. You quit your job with very little notice. Very interesting, Luis. We're still uh, looking to get to the bottom of that. All right? Um, you know, a lot of stories Trump had on North Korea. Um, pretty emotional. Like I said, the guy with the crutches was pretty uh, cool. Um, you know... They say it was the most tweeted uh, State of the Union ever. Pretty interesting. You know, obviously that's the new way things are going about these days. Um, it's because Campbell announces they're shutting down the Canadian plant and moving production to the U.S. Another win for the U.S., like you heard during the State of the Union. How many companies, like just alone, I've read different stories about this week, how Literally, we're probably going to have a trillion dollars in money from about five different companies coming back. You know? And um, that's, you know, that's pretty awesome. I mean, what else, what else can we say about that? That's really good. Um, you know, what else can we go to? Um, I mean, we had McCabe, you know, McCabe retired he said he was going to retire he took vacation till his actual retirement date so he can get full pension and benefits um andrew mccabe you know the deputy director of the fbi he um the memo that's about to be released we know he's in there and you know there are rumors that uh he was told to leave but it's funny when you have Eric Holder and uh, James Comey saying how honest you are, you might be made of wood and you might be called Pinocchio. I don't know. They were saying that uh, Michelle, my bell, Obama, to appear on the Ellen DeGeneres show. Um, and they're saying maybe it's her, her chance to run for the White House. The other few weeks it was Oprah. Now we're moving on or back to Michelle Obama. Sorry, Michelle Obama, but you're not going to get the chance to pardon your husband. We'll leave that at that. Right? Tom Fitton, I don't know, I've mentioned him a few times. Um, but Tom Fitton, he, um, he should be appointed the new AG. And uh, let's just get rid of Sessions now. You know, Tom Fitton has sued the government so many times just to get all the documents out in the open to get the transparency. And he would make a great attorney general and start to put some of these people to jail after these pieces come out. Because I don't, Sessions has not shown he is the man. Yeah, and then it came out this week that Andrew McCabe, um, he went on his way to tell Ryan's previous that uh, the news reported the Trump-Russia collusion findings by the FBI were false. Now, Comey, too, had told Trump that we're not even investigating it because there's nothing there. But then with the McCabe one, he leaked out 
that um, Priebus was talking to him about and telling him, well, you should come out and say there's nothing there. If there's nothing there, they just like, you know, if you're going to tell us there's nothing there, why don't you tell America was basically Priebus and Trump's, you know, whole thing on this with, you know, Priebus with McCabe and Trump with Comey. Now, if you're saying there's nothing here, then tell the American people so we can move on from this. And both with Comey against Trump and McCabe against Priebus, they leaked out the conversation and pretty much saying, oh, no, these guys told us to say there was nothing. This is obstruction. You know, I mean, the whole stupid thing we're on about Russia again. Show us your evidence. We haven't seen any yet. No legitimate evidence. Show it to us, right? And that being said is they know there's none. He's already moved on. And Mueller, it's obstruction of justice, obstruction of justice. What justice is he obstructing if there's no crime? You know, it's the equivalent of um, a police officer coming to your house and saying, we have good information that you robbed the bank. And you pointed a gun to the bank manager, the security guard, and the teller's head. And you're like, I didn't. I wasn't even there. I can tell you I was, I can show you I was somewhere else. And you didn't like show me the video I was there because I wasn't there. And they're like, you know what? You were there, you're guilty, and we want the gun. And you're like, I don't have that gun because it wasn't me. I wasn't there. I didn't point any gun at anybody. And so they have no video to show you were there. They have no proof you were there. You have proof you weren't there. And so now they're going to say, well, we're going to charge you with obstruction of justice. And you're like, Obstructing what justice? You didn't give us the gun. That wasn't me. I wasn't the one who robbed anybody. Well, if you didn't give us the gun, that's obstruction of justice. This is the equivalent of what it's like with the Mueller investigation. If I'm Trump, I don't even sit down with this guy. Like, show somebody some proof. Charge me. You got it? I mean, you see it all the time. You got something on me, man? Charge me. Go for it. It's like, one, your whole investigation is not credible. It's a joke. And two... When we turn out this memo, you're going to be in more trouble than anything. So go for it, dude. And that's why the rush is so on. That's why Mueller's trying to get him in there, trying to get him in there. Because then they could get something and they can try to say, well, this. He said he was, he 10 years ago on a Wednesday night, he said he was uh, at McDonald's. And he, was, he wasn't. We, we have a video of him at Burger King. That's, he's lying to us. You know, we're going to indict him like a ham sandwich. Sorry. I wouldn't go for it. I'd be like, you got something on me? Charge me. Go for it. You have nothing because there's nothing there. If they had something, it would be out. If they had this bombshell evidence, it would be out. They have nothing. There is nothing. Now, today's every day they have some new fake story about this. Or he almost fired Comey at one time and blah, blah. And he, you know, he uh, flipped the nickel up in the air and landed on heads three times. Whatever. You have something, charge me. Otherwise, get out of my way and let me do my business. Yeah. So we have um, Hillary Clinton, you know, disgrace. She was on uh, the Grammys talking about uh, Trump eats at McDonald's not to get poisoned, you know, from the dumb, dumb book, you know, Toilet Water and Fury. Um, it is amazing. Like, I mean, I don't even know. Hillary Clinton must have back problems from how big her freaking balls are. They got to be freaking huge. Here's a lady who's violated the law so many times and in so many ways. And she's still brazen to freaking come out. Here's a lady who's telling you she's for minorities. When there's videos of her praising Robert KKK Bird, the last known KKK clownsman. That was in the government talking about how noble this guy is and eloquent and what a great guy he is and kissing his hand, the hand that's probably murdered many blacks. And no apologizing. No, no sorry. And here she is, the woman's rights, the woman's rights lady who had some of her classified emails sent to uh, Anthony Weiner 
convicted, uh, you know, underage uh, child uh, picture exchanger, Anthony Weiner, remember him? But putting that aside, Hillary Clinton and her big balls, right? The, the guts to go on TV and do that stuff. Even the day before that happened, the Me Too woman's rights Hillary Clinton just came out that uh, she hid the fact that she had a sexual harasser on her staff. It wasn't one. There were other reports before. But here's one. She moved the girl out of her job. But every victim's to be believed, right? Except for when the victim's talking against Hillary. I mean, if you didn't know any better and we just explained her actions, you would think she's some guy that stands by and helps rape people for what she did with her husband, attacking every single girl. You know, and that's her choice. If she doesn't care her husband cheats on her, that's her choice. But to say you're part of the women's movement, when not only that, you've not only hung out with the KKK people that I talked about, but you've also had multiple sexual predators around you and you've embraced them and you've recommended them. You don't even have guts to tell your friend, dump the wiener. Huma Abdi still with this guy. How many times? Cheating. Cheating. Cheating with underage. Taking pictures half naked when your kid's right next to him. I mean, how much more out of control can you be? Yeah, you know. I don't know. Um, unbelievable that uh, Jim Jordan's been doing a lot of work uh, to get some of the stuff out to question people, you know. I'm sure he had some of the do with what, besides Devin Nunes on the memo. And he wants all this stuff to come out, and you see people saying Jim Jordan's a disgraceful loser who's never accomplished anything, a liar. Jim Jordan, here's a guy who's about dedication, right? An Ohio State champion, 150 and one record, a two time NCAA champion at Wisconsin, right? Not only fighting waste and fraud in the federal government, but outspoken against the deep state. And you can say there's no deep state or whatever you want to call it. Call it what you must, but it doesn't matter what the name of it is. It's crooked politicians, crooked FBI, crooked DOJ. It doesn't mean everybody, it doesn't mean the majority, but all you need is one in one department, one in another department. And for people to be attacking this guy, it's absurd. You know what? They're showing you the evidence of what's going on. Um, and one thing I thought was uh, funny this week was uh, Jay Z. Jay Z attacking President Trump about the shithole comment. The shithole comment, which there's no proof he made. Remember, there's a liar in Dick, Dick Durbin who says he said it. There's not any other Democrat witnesses that really said that he said it. Oh, I might have, or this or that, maybe. They don't want to go on the record because they know it's a lie. There's multiple witnesses that said he didn't say it, and they tried to question people about it and waste our time as taxpayers. And even at that point, there was no confirmation that he said it. So at best, we don't even know. With the character of the people, will tend to think he didn't do it. But regardless of that, Jay-Z. Jay-Z, who sold crack, shot his brother, stabbed his producer, punched multiple women in the face, I believe, one being his sister-in-law, cheated on his wife, and that's just what we know about him. You know, I used to always tell, like, employees I had, you'd catch a shoplifter. And they'd be like, oh, we caught, like, three today or something. They'd be like, we're doing good. I'm like, eh, I'm sure that if we caught three, that means there were 30. For every one you catch, 
you probably don't catch 10. It's just the numbers. It's the way I like. You can't see everything all the time. And then yet all the people who catch it, it's their first time. The first time they ever shoplifted. Like, wow, that's amazing. I'm so lucky today. Everybody I've caught shoplifting, it's their first time shoplifting. Now, I'd always be like, I'm sure you've probably shoplifted about 10 times here. And that's about the only time you get caught, like once. So back in the day, I know nobody's going to like this story, but back in the day at the grocery store, when you catch them stealing, when I lived in New Jersey, we'd just ring it up 10 times. And we'd be like, hey, here's your total. Pay that or we're calling the cops and you're going to jail. That's the way you solve that problem. I know, I know, can't do that anymore in modern day world, whatever. Um, but the point of that is, is that's what we do know about Jay-Z. And I guarantee you there's about 10 times as much we don't know. And here's a guy, another one with the balls, to attack Trump. I mean, seriously, do these people ever look in the mirror? and see more than just what they want to see? That's a million dollar question, and I will say, uh, probably not. Yeah, probably not. So I seen people the other day, they were talking about um, some of the greatest takedowns by police, like somebody getting sprayed with mace in the face. I saw one on the highway where some guy tried to run up on some other officer, some officer came behind, Picked him up and slammed him to the ground, you know, just a bunch of, you know, fools, like America's dumbest criminals and stuff. But I still believe that the greatest police, I don't know if you can call it a takedown ever, was still, and I remember because I was actually heading to the radio station to do a show um, that night, it was when Trump was in Phoenix, and um, some dude was like... Uh, kicking, uh, he was kicking the tear gas that they were, you know, just sending little tear gas balls, and he was trying to throw them back at the police, because these guys were getting out of hand, throwing bottles at the police. One of the police shot him with one of the, um, tear, like those little tear balls, right in the sack. <laughs> and the dude just fell right down. I mean, just unbelievably funny. I love it. <laughs> There was um, a former Joe Biden Secret Service agent came out this week and said that um, that Joe Biden was so bad, he had to protect all types of women um, from Joe Biden. It was like Harvey Weinstein level stuff. And this guy just skimming through his thing, he was saying that... Um, I mean, Joe Biden, it wasn't just like, you know, it was girls of all ages, women of, I mean, just basically Joe didn't, didn't care if he had a hole in a heartbeat as the crude saying goes, he was all down with it. Um, they, they were saying at one time they had to cancel a, a VP Christmas get together at Joe Biden's house because he would grope all of the wives and touch the girlfriend's behinds. So obviously these guys uh, weren't going to have that. They weren't going over there. But that's Joe Biden for you. What else can you say about that guy, huh? Just a dirty perv. You can see all the pictures, too. There's collages online of this guy. Just touching little girls inappropriately. Older ladies. Remember that? I don't even... Wait, it might have been... I don't think it was Obama's last State of the Union. Maybe? No. I don't remember what it was, but it was some speech. Maybe it was the State of the Union, where um, good old Joe was like rubbing down some dude's wife who's like right behind her, giving her a full deep tissue massage on national TV. Like, really sick, you know? I don't know. I, I just, dude's got problems. So now remember, um, if we go back in history, they were saying that the text messages from the FBI, you know, struck and page, those two, the two lovebirds that were basically saying how they were trying to uh, get Trump in trouble before the election. Then they were trying to hurry up and get Hillary clear before the election. You know, they were saying those messages were lost. 
So if you look at the pattern here, just so you know, for the future, IRS Lewis Lerner, right? She um, attacked certain groups that were Republican um, right before Obama's re-election. And those emails deleted and lost. And I say emails deleted and lost. Is that the, I, like I said, text messages deleted and lost. Hillary's emails deleted and lost. And then it came out um, this week that, um, and I think that's one of the things that got McCabe in big trouble was they had access to those emails and they delayed it to after the election to check up on the new emails that they found on Wiener's people and Wiener's uh, computer. Now, here's an interesting take on dreamers. So we hear how amazing they are. And you hear people like Vincente Fox, former uh, president of Mexico, clamoring about how great they are and Trump's a scum and Trump's just an that because he won't accept everybody, whatever. But it's really interesting, you see, they're so great, yet none of these people, like, why hasn't Vincente Fox asked during the timeline, why are you leaving my country? You know, if these people are so great, why don't you want to keep them in your country? Yeah, you know, that's always been a problem with me, too, with the um, people coming here from Mexico. Like, everybody says how they're awesome and they want to help them. How come we don't help them by helping their own country? I mean, you think most of the time people really want to be in their own country. It's hard to move to another country. And usually you're only doing it either it's for a loved one or it's to get out of a bad situation. We really cared about people. Won't we try to do something to fix Mexico? You know? I don't know. It just always made sense to me if we really cared, you know? What is the problem? You know, the problem is... Mexico. Mexico is overrun by crime so much, run overrun with poor opportunities and a poor quality of life. So that's that's the thing is why not help fix that? And then maybe we won't have a urgent situation like we do now with so many people coming over. And as always, like I said, we should always be picking and choosing who we take. We want people that want to come here, want to be American. If you have somebody that's counter to your culture, counter to your beliefs, you know, are you going to take them on in anything? I mean, if you're just an employer hiring for a job, you know, you manage a McDonald's and you're hiring somebody and they're like, yeah, I want to come work here. I need a job. And they're like, but Burger King's better. I'm going to eat Burger King. And I'm going to tell every customer in here that Burger King's better. You know, but I want to work here because I need a job and Burger King won't hire me. I mean, are you going to hire that person? No, you're not. So it's the same thing here. You want people that actually want to be there. Um, you know, I mean, that's, that's the way that goes. Now, there was a story coming out of, gosh, I want to say it was Washington. Hmm, man, yeah, it was Washington. So, Washington State. So, Washington State is actually suing uh, Motel 6 because um, ICE agents came to Motel 6. They believe there were illegal aliens that uh, committed crimes in their hotel. And Motel 6 gave the information to ICE agents. Here she's staying in this room, and ICE agents took care of it. So now the state of Washington is suing Motel 6 for doing that. I mean, in this case, I think it should be really some One judge throws this out right away. It's ridiculous. Either way, whatever's right or wrong, whatever you believe, state or federal, to put Motel 6 in this situation to begin with, it shouldn't happen. They are just a victim here. Motel 6 is a victim. But in theory, or in reality, I should say, the Fed should come in and arrest anybody who stopped Motel 6 from following federal law. You know, this was the same scum here in Arizona that said SB 1070, 
that wasn't federal law. Arizona can't enforce it. When SB 1070 actually was written like federal law, and it was just Arizona saying, we want to enforce federal law on illegals. So they said, no, it wasn't the exact same wording. You can't do your own laws. The law is federal. That's what the Obama administration argued. That's what a bunch of other people argued, even though it was pretty much a mirror image of the same law. Now, here it is. Federal law again, and all of a sudden, all these local things, all these local states like Washington and California and New York and New Jersey want to make their own law and decide who they will not stop for breaking law and who they won't. You know, why is it we're not treated fairly? We're not treated fairly. If I were to break these laws over, I would be arrested. And these people are not. It's just not fair. It's not right. We're not not being treated like citizens, but we'll be treat we are being treated like second class people here. Um, Rand Paul it was good to see him tonight at um the speech. Um hopefully he's fully recovered from the attack that was put on him. And he said this week that we fill our responsibility steward taxpayers hard earned money when we support countries that chant death to America and burn up be bringing home that money and use it to help rebuild it. I totally agree. Matter of fact, I don't know why we send money to any country. To be honest, I mean, there should be little to none. Maybe once in a while, like helping a friend, you give a little, but in general, giving aid to all the countries that do this project, because we don't even have the money to do. We're borrowing money to do money. Makes no sense. Not this Us, uh, from Palestine, the Palestinian leader, station. He basically, I mean, pretty much don't negotiate, insult him personally, don't insult America, but insult Trump personally. You know, but putting on the side is you went to a foreign country to basically attack you know, I mean and, and you see around the country, um Twin Falls, Idaho. Judge places a gag order on a court case involving three refugees. Or bad judges are everywhere. But now a gag order to keep it balanced, to hide it. Just goes above and beyond. Above and beyond the uh, problems that we already had. Anyhow, um, story came out this week about uh, Stephen Colbert that um, he, you know, colluded pretty much giving up what his show premise is supposed to be. Um, that Colbert and his team at Comedy Central were making episodes at the request of the global, the Clinton Global Initiative, as far back as April 2013. Um, so that came out in some of the emails between the Clinton Group and John Podesta. Um, so the Colbert Report was supposed to have two special episodes. They had, they basically were talking about how they had them do this and that. I mean, so you see. Some As you have, you know, just what I mean, just you know, <laughs> I mean, they're a fraud. They should just tell you they're a fraud. It's like 
me saying I'm a reporter when I'm just giving your opinion, I'm not reporting any facts. Then I should just say it. I should be on. And what else can we say about that? It's also been coming out this week that um, they talked about how Hillary Clinton, now, you know, James Comey and he was pushing it out that uh, Hillary Clinton was innocent. Even though she's guilty of multiple crimes, we're going to say, we're not going to charge her. We'll find her innocent because no court would convict her. Uh, yeah, really? Is that the way it goes? I don't know. I didn't think that's the way the justice system works. Uh, she's committed crimes, but uh, we don't think they'll find her guilty. We're not going to prosecute. Uh, uh, okay. So, but some of the interesting things were um, is that they said she emailed classified information on an unsecured network to a top official. And now the rumors on that, which hopefully come out in this memo, are that that top official, and it's just been growing stronger and stronger. I've heard it once before, and I hear it more and more, that the top official was Barack Obama, who had another email address and was emailing her back and forth. Now, you can say Obama didn't know, just like Scotty didn't know, right? Obama didn't know. The problem with that is, is um. Obama knew she was using an unsecured network, and Obama knew about the devices she was using. So he knew she was suspect, and yet he still ignored the warnings. And he emailed her anyway. You know, lack of listening or judgment or giving a, you know, what less that Obama was. So that was Obama. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Sometimes you got to be speechless. I saw Chuck, Chuck U. Schumer clap a few times tonight. Um, but I remember Chuck U. Schumer said something that stands out as pretty interesting these days. Now, a while back, Schumer told Trump that um, the agencies or like the FBI, DOJ and stuff, could make life difficult for him. Because Trump was saying how one or two of them were incompetent. So Schumer said how they can make life difficult for him. Now, was Schumer saying that, now that we know what we know for the most part, about the FBI and the DOJ, not only colluding to find Hillary innocent, but trying to um, after the fact that Trump won, even though they found Hillary Clinton innocent, um, Trump won, and then after that they tried this scam, the collusion scam to hopefully get him to step down or to find a way to get him impeached or to make sure nothing happens in his agenda. Now that scam, we know about that, but what's interesting is when Schumer said they can make it difficult for him, did he know this was going on? Is that why he said that little trinket of it? And he was just like, pretty much, yeah, it's going to be difficult for you. Or was it just something he said? Now, did Schumer, what did Schumer know and when did he know it, I guess, was the question I'm trying to convey. Because Chuck U. Schumer had a statement to say, they could make life difficult for you. John Trump didn't know they were making life difficult. Phone, which leads me to another thing. So they kept Trump's phone for a while. And this was before the election. Now, they really didn't find out that stuff would have gone. It was anything that could damage. Like, for instance, if Trump said, I, uh, you know, I like a prostitute and want to mouth to somebody on the phone. You don't think that would just find it and get it out of there. So like I said, it's and the whole thing is funny because Bernie Sanders probably would be Hillary Clinton. 
she cheated him and every Democrat voter voted for him out of their vote. So now she becomes a nominee. Now she has the emails hanging over her head, which she's guilty of and everybody knows that in any court of law she would have been convicted and put in jail. People have been put in jail for less. Trust me, there's many people sitting in Leavenworth for a lot less violations of uh, secured and unsecured stuff. But Hillary Clinton, they had to make her innocent. So that's why Comey came out with that half, like, and people like, Comey was again, no. It was embarrassing. He knew it. Everybody knew it. Everybody knew this investigation was, there was stalls, there was missing stuff. There was, uh, yeah, she, so what? She had a hundred plus classified emails. There was, let her look at, and she'll give you what she wants. Like never in a case have I ever heard the police say, oh, we'll let you sift through the evidence and give you what, what you want to give us. You can give us whatever you want. Just look through your own stuff. Whatever evidence you feel, you can give it to us. Never happens. Then they destroyed um, the original computers really quick. And they also, if you don't remember, they gave immunity to two, if not three people in the case. Now, why would you give deals of immunity to somebody? Now, obviously, you thought they committed a crime. Otherwise, they wouldn't need a deal of immunity. So you gave immunity to two to three people that were witnesses that were part of Hillary's staff or just a little bit on the outside. What did they get immunity for if they didn't get anything? So why did they get immunity? Either they gave you something and you didn't use it. It doesn't make sense. How do you kind of deal with three different people? I'm not sure if it's three, but I know it was two at least. Two different people got full immunity to give some information up, and then there are no charges. How does that work? Is it that poor of investigative work? I mean, what do we got going on here? So, I mean, like I said, in any court, she would have been found guilty. So they had to figure out a way to get her innocent and show she's innocent. Look, she's not going to be charged. Even though she committed a crime, she's not going to be charged. So now she could become president. So they thought that was the end of that. Then when she lost, they're like, oh, no, now we got to go to the backup plan. The insurance policy struck the insurance policy of let's try to impeach him. How are we going to impeach him? Well, we can say Russia. We can say collusion. And they knew all this stuff was fake, but they had the wiretap. They had nothing else because if there was something there, they would have had him from the wiretap. It'd already be done. And you can put that on with the Carter Page thing. Now, Carter Page, um, before he worked for Trump, two years before he worked for Trump, they were investigating him saying this guy was an agent to Russia. So they had wiretaps in this guy for two years. Obviously, they had nothing or they would have brought him in. And then if they knew something about it, how would they let him go to work for Trump, who was a candidate? Just like Obama knew how Russia was trying to hack into the elections and he did nothing about it. How would they let this Carter Page guy go work for Trump if he was a Russian spy? They would put a stop to it. They would have arrested him if they had anything. They didn't have anything. They didn't know anything. So they pay, They had him tapped for two plus to work for Trump. And now they use that excuse to get tap on him when he was working for Trump. And guess what? Still no charges are against him because they don't have anything. So when they're tapping this guy for three years and they have nothing on him. I mean, obviously their taps have led to nothing. That's why they have no charges, no evidence, nothing. We don't know anything more about any Russia collusion with Trump today than we did years ago. You know, a year ago, a year and a half ago since they've been investigating him. Because there's nothing there. They had someone to be at. And just like the collusion, there's no collusion. Colluded to do what? Because there's no crime. It's all a farce and it was all a scheme. They want to go against the will of the people. If they ever think that's going to happen, they're wrong. If you want to see an uprising in this country, it will happen when you take an elected president out for false, false, and everybody knows false, no evidence, nothing. And they know it and they're trying this excuse and that excuse. Every excuse to get this guy out. I'm sorry, it's not happening. It's not happening with the people here who voted for him. You will have more than half the country and the ones that work harder in this country, the ones that have the passion. They got up to vote then. And you'll have more and more people joining that because people know that this is a sham, this is a scam. You look at all the crimes that Obama committed, one of the most scandal plagued presidencies. Today and you're still here.
evidence of what he did. And not even an impeachment for him. And you're going to impeach somebody else based on innuendo. Sorry, not going to work out for you. My name is Ben Shannon, host of the Reality Check. I'll be back here. Something very interesting to do, a random segment going this week. Have a great week.